welcome to the program. My name is David Kenny. I'm the preacher for the Wadsworth Church of Christ here in Wadsworth, Ohio. We're glad that you can turn in, tune into our program, Light from Above. Today we have a guest with us, Andy Robinson from the West Virginia School of Preaching. Andy, we're really glad you can come by and tell us a little bit about yourself and about the things you're involved in. So we're really glad you could be with us today. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'm glad to be here. I like to always t talk about, you know, family and things like that. That's always very important when you're talking about church and religion and things like that. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your family? I am married to uh, the lovely Marcia. Uh, she was Marcia Giesler in Rolla, Missouri. We met at Harding University. We've been married almost 25 years now. We have a 20-year-old daughter who is at Harding now. Her name is Hannah and a 17-year-old son, Andrew. We're uh, very proud of them, and uh, we love each other very much. I hate to be away from them, <laughs> but sometimes that's necessary. Now, it seems to me, now, you're Andy Robinson the fourth. I'm the fourth. I'm Andrew Jackson Robinson the fourth, and I burdened my son with the continuation of that series, so he's the fifth. So Roman numerals are very popular in your Yes, family. they are. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Harding. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your educational background in addition to Harding? Well, I, I uh, grew up in Moundsville, West Virginia, graduated from John Marshall High School in Glendale, West Virginia. Went to a High Valley College, which is now High Valley University in Parkersburg, uh, West Virginia. Went there three years and then finished up uh, at Harding University with a bachelor's degree, uh, having a double major in Bible and vocal music. Finished that. I've done some graduate work here and there through the years, and uh, mainly at Harding, but uh, that about sums that up. Now, vocal music, that's pretty interesting. Uh, what, uh, what led you to be interested in vocal music? I'd always been in choruses in junior high school and high school and got to study in music and was always in the choruses in college and became very interested in the study of it and decided to go ahead and get the major in it. Well, great. Now, Andy's also uh, affiliated with West Virginia Christian Youth Camp. He serves on the board of directors with that. Uh, Andy, why don't you tell us a little bit about West Virginia Christian Youth Camp and your experiences you've had with that. West Virginia Cr Christian Youth Camp is outside of Pennsboro, West Virginia, way out in the country. Special place to my heart, not because of the place, but mainly because of the people. I've been associated with a lot of great people there, and we've tried to touch a lot of young lives the way that uh, ours have been touched. Mine was touched there very strongly as a young person, so we try to touch others, and we've... Uh, we have a good facility out there. We own the facility. And every summer we have uh, four or five weeks of camp. This year we'll have six weeks of camp to try to give the young people a good time and teach some good things as well. Now in the picture you, that we had up on the screen, it showed your latest CD that you made uh, called Resurrection. Tell, this isn't the first CD that you've come out with for the, for the camp itself. Why don't you tell them a little bit about the Resurrection CD and some of the other ones? Well, back in uh, the year 2000, we came out with, back, actually back then, a cassette tape. And the idea was to write some original songs and also incorporate some songs that people knew already, record them, and then use them as a fundraiser for the camp. So we've come out with one every other year since then, 2002, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And the latest one we've come out with, 2010's was Resurrection, 2012 is Amazing Grace. We've raised over $50,000 for the camp with this effort. And uh, even more importantly than that, we've been able to provide some good recorded music to some missionary spots overseas in English-speaking territories uh, where they might not have some access to some of that sort of thing. And we've been very happy to do that. A lot of people donate their time in singing. Uh, a good friend, Greg Yost, do donates recording studio time, and we're able to get those things done and hopefully be of some benefit to some people. Now, what, if someone was to get one of these CDs, what would be a striking difference between, say, that CD and maybe some of the modern Christian worship, contemporary worship CDs? What would they, what would they be surprised by? Well, these are all a cappella. They're all uh, sung strictly with voices. There are no instruments involved because of what we believe. And uh, we try to uh, have a mixture of different types of music as well. We have some of the old standard classics like Oh, How I Love Jesus and some newer uh, contemporary songs, and then some originals that we write. We try to break them up in about a third each of those three categories. Now, if somebody wanted to learn more about West Virginia Christian Youth Camp, what would be the best way to find out more information about it? The website is www.wvcyc.com, as in West Virginia Christian Youth Camp .com. There's a lot of information there and contact information where they could find us, too. Okay, great. 
Andy mentioned that he's written some songs, and uh, we, off, we also have a picture of one of the song books that he put out, and we'll show you what that looks like. It's currently being revised. Uh, he also does something I think is very good. He puts a, a CDs where you can listen to people singing the songs because it's very difficult to learn a new song if you're not familiar with it. Uh, so he provided uh, that song book and the CD that goes with it, and it's currently being revised. Uh, but he's also made this material available to anyone who's interested in it on a website. And we'll show you the website here, uh, churchofchristsongs.com. And on that website, you can see the songs that uh, mostly that end. Uh, are these songs all that you've written yourself? Or? Well, some of them I've written by myself. Some of them I've collaborated with others, uh, including my son and my daughter, one, and some very good friends as well, one named Mike Yost and uh, some others. So we have those on there in uh, PDF format where you can print them, uh, in PowerPoint format where you can project them in your congregation and sing, and in MP3 format so you can download them and listen to, and they're all free. So anyone out there that has an internet site can go out there, they can read the sheet music, they can listen to the song, they can use the PowerPoint, and all that's available to them, and they can sing like they did in the first century. That's right. We can just uh, sing and make music in our hearts the way Ephesians 5.19 says to do. Okay. Well, I'd like to uh, take a moment to show you a little bit about Warren Christian Apologetics Center. We'll put the slide up here. We're going to uh, play one of Andy's songs for you. Uh, the Warren Christian Apologetics Center was founded uh, really out of a lot of the work by Thomas B. Warren. And I have three tracks up there. Uh, we can know there's a God, we can know that the Bible is the Word of God, and we can know that Jesus Christ uh, is God or is His Son. Uh, those are three excellent tracks that were written by the late Tom Warren. Tom Warren debated uh, very highly known atheists and others at the time. Uh, you may not be familiar with them, but you would recognize your names if you do a lot of research in apologetics. And he wrote these three tracks, and I would really encourage you to get those. But we're going to play, Andy wrote a song for the Warren Christian Apologetics Center called My God is Alive, and he wrote that as their theme song that they use. And it's an excellent song. I'd like to give you the opportunity to hear Andy's song uh, at this time. We'll play it for your enjoyment right now. My God is alive, my God is alive, my God is creator and he is alive. My God is alive, my God is alive, my God is creator and he is alive. He made all the heavens and earth, yes it's true, he showed all his glory so there's no excuse. So worship, adore him, and lift high his name. So let us the ages his greatness proclaim. My God is alive, my God is alive, my God is alive. The Christ is alive, the Christ is alive, the Christ is our Savior, and he is alive. The Christ is alive. The Christ is alive, the Christ is our Savior, and He is alive. He rose from the bondage and gloom of the grave, exalted on high for the life that He gave. So glory and honor and praise is His name. So King of all kingdoms His Sonship proclaim. The Christ is alive, the Christ is alive. The Christ is alive. God's Word is alive. God's Word is alive. God's Word is the Bible and it is alive. God's Word is alive. God's Word is alive. God's Word is the Bible and it is alive. The Spirit inspired the great men of God who penned all the message while he it's sharpens and swords and it bears the same. Since power is failing, its worth we proclaim. God's word is alive. God's word is alive. God's word is alive. And it's really a good song because it, it talks about the importance of knowing there's a God, knowing the Bible is His word, 
and that Jesus is his son. So that's, that's an excellent song, and I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Also to the, the Warren Christian Apologetics Center for allowing us to show it as well. So I really appreciate you bringing that by for us to hear. It's my pleasure. I think uh, one way of teaching is in song as the Lord planned it, and I hope it can do some good in ingraining these great truths in people's minds. Yeah, we brought Andy in for several reasons. I've always been impressed by anyone who can write anything, uh, as, whether it be poetry or for music. And so I've been very interested in some of the information that Andy's been able to share with us. But Andy's also the director of the West Virginia School of Preaching. The West Virginia School of Preaching is located in Moundsville, West Virginia. And I wanted him to come in and, and to explain to you about this opportunity that is available for people to learn about the Bible and also to learn about the Bible to be able to preach it and share it with others. So, Andy, why don't you tell us a little bit about the school itself. When was it founded? The school was founded in 1994. Some of the area uh, people in the Churches of Christ saw that it was a, a great need to produce more preachers and give them an opportunity. So what this school does is provides an opportunity for a tuition-free education. Uh, a young man might come and decide that he wants to be a preacher. He then needs to raise his living expenses from other folks or some people that might contribute to him because he doesn't have time to work a job while he's at our school. As you know, it's pretty uh, intense and tedious work while they're there. They uh, come to class about 8.30 every morning and stay in class till about 4 o'clock in the afternoon with a lunch break and then they have their homework to do for the next day. They do this for two years with a short summer break in order to get a lot of curriculum in. In the midst of that curriculum, they will study how to defend the existence of God, the inspiration of the Bible, and the deity of Christ, as you mentioned regarding the Warren Center. As a matter of fact, some of the Warren Center's uh, founders are some of our instructors, and they're very well versed in the fact that a person can know these things and not believe these things on blind faith. After that, we try to teach the students to just know the Bible. We have a course in every book of the Bible where we cover every verse of the Bible so they can at least have a working familiarity with it by the time they're done. We also have some uh, auxiliary subjects regarding that Bible geography course that tells you about Bible places in the Holy Lands and around the Mediterranean area where a lot of the events took place. We have a Greek course where students can learn New Testament Greek and must learn it pretty well to be able to graduate. We have a marriage and family course. We have a course on understanding the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then we also have some courses on helping them be able to uh, learn how to communicate the gospel well. We have a course in English grammar. We have a course in homiletics, which is the art of putting together a lesson and preaching. We're not about fancy speech or eloquence. The Apostle Paul wasn't. In Acts ch or 1 Corinthians chapter 2, rather, he said he did not come with eloquence of speech or of wisdom, but in demonstra demonstration of the spirit and the power of God's word. Well, that's what we want to do, but we still think it's necessary to learn some good devices to help people be able to communicate well. And so we have those courses as well. This uh, curriculum lasts about two years. It is uh, a very intense curriculum. It's very difficult for students to get through, but when young men come through, they generally feel like they've done a good thing and they're able to communicate the basics and the depth of the gospel to many, many people. We're very thankful for that. Now tell me a little bit about some of your, some of the faculty you have there. I mean, I know oh, their yeah. names, I know who they are, and, but some of the people here, they, some of the names you're not going to be familiar with. Why don't you give us, tell us about some of the faculty there on the school. Well, we have a faculty consisting of people that I just uh, have come to love dearly over the years. A lot of the preachers in the area within about a two hour drive will give up some of their time and come in uh, almost on a volunteer effort. They get paid some expenses but no high amount of pay at all. They do it because of their love for it. We have people like Terry Jones from the Pennsboro Church of Christ who I think has been on your program before. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people like Emmanuel Darty, who's uh, what I would consider an expert in the prophets of the Old Testament. We have people like Charles Pugh and Terry Varner that are also connected with the the War and Christian Apologetics Center. We have people like uh, me, unfortunately. Some of the <laughs> students have to listen to me every once in a while. And we have uh, a marriage and family therapist who is on staff for our marriage and family class. His name is uh, Peter Ray Cole. We have Charles Abbey, who is 
used to be at Ohio Valley uh, University for years and years and is a brilliant, brilliant teacher. Gene West, who's the local preacher at Hillview. Now I'm getting afraid I'm going to leave somebody <laughs> out. I hope they won't be offended. But uh, we just have an excellent lineup of uh, people who are teaching for us. Steve Snyder is another one from Barrickville, West Virginia. Steve Stevens from 100, West Virginia. These men all devote their time and efforts and energy out of a love for uh, their Lord and a love for souls that might eventually come to know Him through other people that they teach. Now, tell me, you know, you have a lot of students that come in. What would be some of the things that maybe students find surprising? Because a lot of people think, well, I'll just go to preaching school. It'll be a cakewalk. There's yeah. nothing to it. Uh, what are some of the shocks that uh, the average person that comes to the school, to the West Virginia School of Preaching, what are some of the things that you find out that caught them off guard? Some of them get a little bit caught off guard when they realize they have to do some research and some research papers. We have an excellent library uh, in which people can learn about religious history, the things that have been written on particular subjects over the years. We might not agree with everything that's in the library, but it's there for people to peruse and see what has been said. And we try to then research those things and give Bible answers for them. We try to teach research papers in a scholarly manner so they'll at least know how to do that. And some people are shocked by that. We have the uh, courses in English grammar. Some people are shocked. Well, we want them to be able to speak halfway decently when they go out into the world. And uh, also, they uh, maybe sometimes are a little bit of shocked at the intensity of the work. It's uh, the kind of thing where a person can do it. It can be done, but it takes probably more focus than they've ever had to offer any other particular vocation in their lives to that point. Imagine uh, when I think about the work that the students put in and the work that the teachers do and all the other staff that helps with the school and all that. And I think about the word commitment. You got it's a major commitment. It's a major commitment by the faculty and it's got and these students they have to come with a major commitment. It's not like they're going to just come in and it's going to be vacation Bible school where it's right. all fun fun fun. Right. Um, so the um, if I, if memory serves, Emmanuel Darty was the first director. Is that correct, or is my that you're exactly correct? The uh, commitment factor. I'll say another word on it. I admire these students greatly for coming into this school, and they're essentially giving two years of their lives to difficult study. Some of them have families at home, some of them are uh, single men, but they are giving two years of their lives, and I admire them greatly for doing so. You're correct. Emmanuel Darty was our first director who directed the school for nine years. Denver Cooper took over after him. Uh, Denver, I think, used to preach at the Wadsworth Church, or Denver's brother Don used to preach at the Wadsworth Church here, and Denver's done meetings in this area. Denver is a very good man, and he decided to retire at the young age of 89. We admire his work ethic so very, very much, and we love him. But uh, then he vacated last June, and the uh, elders of the church there asked me to take over in September. And uh, while it's a huge task with great big shoes to fill, I'm glad to have the opportunity to serve in this capacity. Now tell me, you, know, you mentioned about you know, the director's work, and a lot of people have, you know, when they hear the word director, it's like manager, supervisor. We all have our preconceived ideas what those terms mean. What is the life of a director of the School of Preaching like? Well, the life of a director involves some teaching, as I mentioned, and uh, then basically you are setting the course for the school you first of all have to make sure all the classes have teachers available because sometimes teachers age or drop out for different reasons and you have to make sure those slots are filled not by warm bodies but by very capable men and then there is also the aspect of fundraising if a school doesn't need money it's never going to float along when a school doesn't need money it will go under mm -hmm. so uh, there's the aspect of fundraising that is involved and then there's the aspect of long-range planning. What do you want to do? How can we improve? What can we do to communicate ourselves? Then you have to think about recruiting students. You, I know I personally don't like to twist people's arms into coming. I don't think anybody would want that. I don't think our other directors did either. But what we want to do is make a good reputation for ourselves out and about where people know about us and know that we have some good things to offer you combine all of those things together and you've got a pretty good day's work. Now the uh, the school also puts on an annual lectureship. I yes. was able to, I think it's, it's in October? 
Usually the last full week in October is what we call our victory lectures. Emmanuel Doherty came up with that term because he wanted to give us a positive nature towards things. And we have one of the best lectureships, I believe, in the, uh, among the churches of Christ. Uh, the others are very good, but we think ours holds its own water. We, we do a, a good job bringing in some speakers from far away, and then our local preachers do a good job. Often we take a particular subject, and more often than not, it's a particular book of the Bible, and we dissect it and get into the topics which it brings up and try to expose the depths of the research and the uh, riches of God's wisdom in that particular uh, book of the Bible. You always, you always put out a lectureship book, which I always find very profitable for those who are unable to be there. You also have some of the lectures on the website too, if I recall, where they can read some of them, or some of them are on audio or even video, or could you explain that a little bit? Uh, recently, our secretary has been updating our website, and doing a very good job, and we have the last couple of years lectures audio on there, MP3 files, and uh, the books are available through us for a uh, uh, very minimal, very minimal at cost charge. We don't make anything off of them. They uh, are very helpful for people's research on a particular subject. Or getting back to the audio, a person can click on those and listen while they're going about their business and learn some good things as they go. Now, how would they come across these on the website? Could you tell them a little bit how to access them? Go to www.wvsop.com. West Virginia School of Preaching is what it stands for, wvsop.com. There are all kinds of different tabs there about, to, about how to get the lectures and about our curriculum, about our staff, about housing, about potential students, and application is available online, and uh, also our contact information if we could try to help anyone. And you know, it's also put out a newsletter comes out, it seems like once a month, the publishing piece, I believe. And once a month, except for December, we put out a four-page uh, glossy back newsletter uh, that has an article from uh, me as the director on the front page, from our editor, uh, Jeff Soule, on the inside left, uh, from one of our faculty members on the inside right, and one of our alumni on the back. So it makes for a good teaching tool and a good publicity uh, tool for the school. Now, there, people can sign up to receive that via email, too, if I remember correctly. People can so. sign up on the website and receive that via email, so it doesn't cost any postage. If they would prefer it by postage, we can get their postal address and send it to them that way for no charge. Very good, very good. Uh, let me ask you one more thing about the school. What, what is the, uh, maybe not the ideal student, but someone that's considering to come to the school preaching, what, what kind of student would that be? What kind of student are you looking for? We've actually had different demo demographics. An ideal student, uh, I really don't know. An ideal student would be someone who just really wants to learn how to preach the gospel of Christ. Uh, we've had men who are in their 20s and single. We have a dormitory available for them uh, in which we have limited space for a certain number of students. Uh, sometimes we've had men in their late 20s, early 30s, even up into their 40s with families, children at home that they're raising and they uh, are making quite the sacrifice and their wives are to be heralded as heroes, I think, for helping to raise the children while their husbands are off doing such intense study. And of course, the husbands come home at night, but they often have a lot of studying to do then as well. The, so what, and then we've had some older gentlemen who are retired from a previous profession, still have a lot of life and energy ahead of them and want to use that for good. What we would encourage is anyone who's thinking about preaching the gospel and would want to make the commitment to a two-year program, give us a call and let us talk to them about it, and we'd be glad to walk them through the uh, basics and the curriculum, give them a tour of the school, answer whatever questions they might have. Great. Well, we really appreciate you coming in and talking with us about uh, the school and the songwriting, songwriting that you've done and West Virginia Christian Youth Camp and, and all the work that you're trying to do to help young people uh, through the school and through the camp and all that. So we're really thankful for the work that you're doing. And we really appreciate you coming in and sharing these things with us today. All right. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for, for today. We're really glad you were able to watch the program. And please stay tuned for this important message. Thanks for watching Light from Above. Before we close our program today, we'd like to take a moment and review this roadmap to heaven with you since the matter is so serious. There are many incorrect set of directions out there, and sadly, so many people are following them. For example, some people have been given wrong turns. They believe things such as faith only, works only, or grace only. Or some attempt to change the order of the turns, being baptized before they even believe. Some people fail to realize what point they are on the map. 
don't even open their Bibles yet and they think they're saved already. As a person travels in a car or takes a hike, has to follow the proper directions, so we must follow the proper directions to heaven. Let's take a look at the directions on our roadmap to heaven here. You have to look at these passages in your Bible for yourself. We'll just list the steps, the turns on the way. First is to believe or to have faith. And then number two, to repent, to turn away from sin. Number three is to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Number four is immersion or to be baptized, which is a burial in water to have your sins washed away. And then you're added to the church by the Lord, not by a group of people or not by giving some kind of testimonial experience or things like that. And then once you're added, you need to serve and worship the Lord faithfully all the days of your life. And that, the key word's faithfully. You don't waver. And that's very important. We need to keep in mind, too, that in Noah's day, there was a big flood, and only people in the ark were saved from the flood. The same is true today. There is no salvation outside the Lord's church. Where are you on the road map to heaven? Thanks for watching our program. Please let us know if we can assist you with further information for your journey. In this world we have our troubles. Satan says we must evade.